Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with, if I could choose only one work by Composer X, it would have to be work H. Well, Composer X is César Franck, and you guys have been chatting about Franck really since we started this series. And, you know, we've done a lot of Franck videos, actually. I think it's been one of the more interesting aspects of, of our program here over the past couple of years because he still doesn't get the respect he deserves, and he was a very, very great composer. He really was, and he wrote masterpieces really throughout his life, not just the late stuff. However, of course, we have to pick something, and this something must be the violin sonata. And I know you're going to say, oh, gosh, that's so so typical and so obvious. Well, sometimes, yes, we must be obvious. Because, well, first of all, we could do the symphony in D minor. We could do, if we wanted to be, like, kind of tricky and 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 curmudgeonly, we could do the string quartet or the piano quintet, both of which are magnificent works and vastly underrated. Or we could really be, go out there and do some of the organ music, like the Trois Chorales, you know, the last three organ pieces, which are magnificently fabulous. Or we could be populist to do the Chasseur Maudit. I mean, he wrote a lot of really good music. But it's got to be the violin sonata because, first of all, it's the greatest violin sonata written in the second half of the 19th century, basically, um, which was a, a territory, um, a terroir, which had very few great violin sonatas. In fact, actually, a lot of them were by French composers. The Sasson violin sonatas are terrific. The Foray violin sonatas are terrific. They were very, very good. But there weren't many great violin sonatas being written. And the Franck is so great. It's kind of like the Dvorak cello concerto to cello concertos. You know, it just kind of like blows away all the competition. It really is just extraordinary. I mean, it's in cyclical form. It's passionate. It's intense. It has that finale that's a perfect canon in the most beautiful, innocent, limpid melody you've ever heard in your life, you know? Do, 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 do. Oh, I can't even try it. Da, 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 There we go. Ya, da, 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 Ya, da, 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 With the violin and piano following each other. It's it's amazing. And it's been arranged for flute. And it's been arranged for cello. And it's been arranged for contrabassoon, and it's been arranged for accordion. God knows what else it's been arranged for. It's just an extraordinary piece of music. It really is. And what's more, it is as typical of its composer as it's possible to be. I mean, it really is. I, you know, it, it, it could have been written by no one else on the planet. And it has all of those characteristics that, that we love about Frank, not just the cyclical form, the rich chromatic harmony, that, that passionate sort of expression, which, you know, people sometimes mistake for a certain tackiness, which I just think is a criminal, criminal misrepresentation of what Frank was about. He couldn't be tacky to save his life. I mean, he was totally sincere. And, and what's even better is it has that unbelievable Frankian melody, that one, that one in the in the finale is a case in point, where a repeated phrase undergoes like a little harmonic shift that changes its direction. That it's just a little chromatic kind of sleight of hand. He does it. He does it all the time. I mean, he does it in the finale of the symphony in D minor, right? Da 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 and then it goes da 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 It's the same thing, the same concept. It's one of the ways we know Frank is being Frankian. And he does it, he does it all over the place. He does it the symphonic variations. He does oh, it's just everywhere. But that's what makes his style so special. And I really think if we are to go to the evil god Cancrazans and say, look, listen to this thing. Isn't it just beautiful? Isn't it amazing? And if you eliminated all the rest of classical music, you wouldn't have the opportunity to hear th those other late masterpieces of Franck, which sound like nothing else anybody wrote. And not just that, not just that, all the treasures of 19th century French chamber music, of which there are so many that are, are largely ignored. And if they're 
gone, they'll stay ignored. We need the opportunity to explore, to explore in greater depth, to listen, to experiment, to challenge ourselves, to get to know all of those masterpieces out there. And so the franc is characteristic not only of the composer, but of an entire school of great chamber music writing that deserves to be savored and still hasn't gotten the credit it deserves. So we really need to give it a little more uh, time and attention. And I think that I can tell the evil god Cancrazans that yes, um, we deserve the opportunity to do exactly that. And we promise that we will if we get the opportunity, because that's the point. You know, that's why he's so annoyed with us, of course, because there's all this great music out there that we don't pay any attention to. And, you know, the record labels just keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, including the Frog Sonata, but there are more. And, and we deserve to have an opportunity to hear them. So keep on listening, friends. Thank you so much for joining me. Take care. <laughs>